make this coming out. Ah, know. that's the mystery. People already were accusing me that this will be, you know, like the liver of Mallarmé, this forever being promised. No, no. To put it in Stalinist terms, it exists, the manuscript, in objective reality independently of my mind, no? I just now, I'm trying to make a real book out of it, which means I am now, I want to take another half a year to, you know, cut all the repetitions, what I'm famous for, you know, all that stuff, and really provide a line of uh, thought and so on. No, 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 but the book is there. So it will be like seven, eight hundred pages at least and so on, and uh, the title will probably be uh, less than zero. Less than zero, I mean, playing, because there, it's a very pretentious book. It ends up with a long chapter on quantum physics, Hegelian reading. So this is another point, you know. I, I wouldn't dismiss as easily as you did uh, Hegel's philosophy of nature. I mean, wait a minute, do you know that now there is an entire school in Germany trying to rehabilitate it? Of course, it is clear, let's be clear, we cannot play stupid games here, that uh, generally what we call modern natural sciences are a problem for Hegel. Hegel still looks for speculative meaning and so on. But nonetheless, if you read, you know, with Hegel, you shouldn't do what unfortunately I claim Heidegger is often doing, which is kind of a, you know, find one quote which, as it were, uh, isolates the basic structuring principle and then like you take whatever one passage on negativity on substance subject and then with ultra deep reading of that passage no you have to go step by step through all argumentations Hegel has to be read in detail and if you do this beware you can first you know what did strike me in his philosophy of nature which which brings in a totally new perspective, I think, also his absolute knowing, which should absolutely not be taken in this idiotic way, oh, there was a guy, a Russian bureaucrat, who thought he knew everything, reading might of God. You know how often in philosophy of nature, he simply says, and it's crucial not to read this as cheap historicism, but nonetheless as some unheard of version of self-limitation, however you call it, how often he says, very honestly, oh, about this we don't yet know enough. I cannot develop a theory, and so on and so on. About problems in physics, and so on and so on, quite often. Point two, how often you have, like, for example, I read recently in a book of Ein on Einstein, how Hegel's critique of Newtonian notion of abstract time and space is like as if you've taken it from Einstein and so on and so on. But okay, let me not get lost here. The book will be out. Uh, I first want to react to what you said just briefly. This would be a good beginning about this uh, Kant, Hegel, Hegel as always standing on the shoulders of Kant, getting over. I would just add a complication here. Because I think that this, you cannot even take it as an argument against Hegel. Let me take, and I often do this line in some of my books, Vernunft, Verstand, Understanding, Reason. It's incredible how often Hegel is misread here as if he is saying, you know, uh, 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 Verstand, Understanding, is this crude metaphysical thinking in distinct fixed categories, and then, uh, uh, Vernunft is reason, the properly dialectical self-movement of notions, and so on and so on. It's much more complex, like, you know, one of the best known passages in phenomenology. There he praises as the absolute power to which nothing can resist, Verstand, not Vernunft. My reading is still totally different. My reading is that Verstand to pass from Verstand to Vernunft. You don't have to add anything. You just have to take it away. Verstand is already Vernunft. What makes it Verstand? For example, when you have some categories, what makes it Verstand is if you take these categories in a formal way. 
that you think all these are just abstract categories, there is out there reality to which we have to apply them. But if you see that everything already is infrastand, this is vernunft. In other words, the Hegelian answer to this Kantianism problem would have been that he is, in a way, more Kantian than Kant. He takes Kant more literally than Kant took him. He, that is to say, this very idea that you have to add something to abstract categories to make them alive, introduce some stupid movement or whatever, this is the illusion of reason. The illusion of reason, sorry, the illusion of verstand, understanding, is precisely that categories of reasons are an abstract frame, and then to make them alive you have to add something. You become Hegelian when you see that you don't have to add, but that's another topic. Let's nonetheless, okay, I will do my job now.